Hi everyone, this is Audrey from TechWritingMatters.com. Uh, this is the first video in a four-part series on how to document your project using Sphinx. So if you're not sure what this is about, uh, please do watch the introductory video where I've given more detail. But in this video, we're going to jump right into the first three steps, uh, creating a repository and then installing Sphinx. The very first thing you're going to have to do is uh, create a GitHub account if you don't have one already, and then uh, create a new repository. Now, I'm not working on someone else's repository, but if you are, you're going to have to fork and clone that repository uh, onto your local drive. I'm pushing my docs onto my very own repository, so I'm just going to create a new one here. And Joobla is the name of the software I'm documenting. Um, I don't know if I want to read me. Sure, that's a good idea. The readme file is where people will go to figure out what your project is all about. Create repository. Okay, so this is my new repository. That's the readme file. It doesn't have anything in it at the moment. The next thing I'm going to do is clone this repository to my local drive. So at the moment, I have a folder here, Python projects, that's completely empty. And this is where I want my repository folder to go. So to do that, I'm going to hit clone or download and click on the copy button here. So it's going to copy this URL. I'm going to go into my command line and navigate to that folder that I want my repository to be in. Great, and I'm going to now clone the repository here. So if I go back into the folder, I see now the, my repository folder is here. It should just have the readme file in there and everything else is blank. So we're going to start building up our documentation here in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to clear this. And the next thing you're going to do is check if you have Python or pip installed. Now, if you're using Mac or Linux, most likely you have Python installed already. So you can check by running So I have version 2.7, which is a slightly older version, but we'll go with it. And I'm going to check for pip. So yeah, I do have pip installed as well. If you're a Windows user uh, and you don't have Python installed, what you can do is go to python.org and you should be able to download it from here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is install a virtual environment. Uh, now I have an older version, so I'm going to use the module virtual env. But if you have a newer Python version, you can use venv. Uh, and if you have 3.3 or newer, I believe you, do, you can skip this step entirely because it's already installed with your standard library. So I'm going to run Okay, and it's already installed, but it should install for you. Okay, so now I'm ready to create my virtual environment. I'm just going to go into my repository folder. And now I can create the environment in this folder. So I'm going to run. So replace 2.7 with whatever version of Python you have. And here you can give your environment any name you want. I'm going to name mine Jubler ENV just to make it really specific, but you could just leave it at ENV if you wanted to. And I'll hit enter. Okay, so it looks like that completed successfully. Let's see what happened. And there we go. I can see the new virtual environment I just created in my repository folder. So that's great. So now whenever we want to work on our project, we'll have to activate our virtual envi environment before we can start work. So the command for that is, and remember to put in your own environment name here. And you'll know it's successful because at the start of the, the, the line, it'll show Jubler env in parentheses. So that's how you know your environment is active. To deactivate it, you just have to run deactivate, and that gets you out. I'm just going to go back in. Great, so we've installed and created a virtual environment, and now we are ready to install Sphinx. I'm just going to clear this. Okay, so I'm actually going to install Sphinx inside a new folder. So I'm going to create another folder here named Docs, and that's where Sphinx is going to be installed, just to keep everything nice and organized. So I'll make sure I'm in my project folder and mkdir docs. Great. So now I'm ready to install Sphinx.
Okay, so I'm going to run pip install sphinx. And it's going to run a bunch of commands, install sphinx for you, hopefully no errors. Great, so that looks like it completed successfully. And the final step with uh, getting Sphinx up and going is the quick start. Let me just clear this. So Sphinx, quick start. And what this is going to do is run you through a bunch of questions uh, so you can configure your project how you want it to. Now over here, I'm going to say yes because I want separate source and build directories. I've, I'm just used to that now. By the way, whatever's in the square brackets is a default value. So you don't have to, if you wanted to type N here, you could have just pressed enter. Um, so whenever you want to accept the default value, just go ahead and press enter, which is what I'm going to do for this one. So here, give your project the name. That's me. Um, you can modify this as you wish. English is fine. Source file suffix dot rst which stands for restructured text so this tutorial will cover how to write and restructure text so that's great i'm gonna keep that okay so this is asking what we want our master document to be named and the default is index uh, if you want you can change it here to main or master or whatever you want so i'm leaving it at index automatically insert doc strings from modules i'm going to say yes here and for the rest of these i'm happy to accept the default so I'm just entering through all of this. Okay, so create make file, you want to say yes here. If you're using Windows, go ahead and click uh, yes, sorry, type yes here. I'm going to type no. Okay, great. So it says uh, the initial directory structure has been created. It's created these files. So let's have a look. And if I go under docs, there we go. So I can see the files that Sphinx has generated for us. So it says it's created a conf.py file, an index.rst file, which I can see here, a .make file. So that's it. Hopefully you didn't have any errors. We just installed virtual environment and Sphinx. In the next video, we're going to start entering data into the index.rst file, which is the main page or the welcome page of your documentation. We're also going to look at the conf.py file because we can change the themes there and how our work looks on the browser. So see you there.